I, I came here with a question. Uh, it's to do with purpose. And so, uh, am I aware? Yes. Um, a bit wobbly on times. And then, but I wanted to go beyond the who and the what and say, you know, it's not why so much, it's purpose, you know. Like, well, what purpose is there suffering? What purpose? What purpose? Not what suffering, what is suffering, but what purpose? What, what, what is the purpose of suffering? What is the purpose of suffering? To... Uh, uh, and I mean, and this thing also about, you know, the self, and, and what is my purpose for myself to experience myself? And just play. But then beyond that, you know, I mean, so for instance, you know, how, how does it manifest? You know, so you have your pottery and then you have your talking, and, you know. But anyhow. Uh, but when, when you are suffering, the purpose of your suffering is to find its source its cause. Why was it invented in the first place? Sorry? Say that again. Why was it invented? Thank in, you. Why was suffering invented? No, not actually, I am not even why is not okay. Because when infinite consciousness contracts into each of our finite minds, as it must do if it wants to manifest itself as the world, this apparent contraction of itself into a finite mind is, a, is accompanied by a contraction or a diminishing of the happiness that is inherent within it and therefore inherent in each of our minds is this absence or lack of happiness. In other words, the absence of happiness or the experience of suffering is the price consciousness pays for manifestation. Could you repeat that again? Yes. Each of our minds, and when I use the word mind, I don't just mean mind in the conventional sense, including uh, it, to mean our internal thoughts and feelings. I mean mind as the totality of our experience, not just thinking and feeling, but also sensing and perceiving. So infinite consciousness, as we discovered this morning, has no color, no form, no limits. And therefore, in infinite consciousness by itself, there is no manifestation, no world, no objects. In order to manifest a world within itself, infinite consciousness must cease being infinite. It must become finite. It must take the form of each of our minds. In other words, for consciousness to manifest its infinite, its potential, consciousness must contract into a finite mind. In fact, into each of our finite minds. And it is in this contraction that consciousness manifests the potential which lies unmanifest in potential within it. Now, because of this contraction, or it's only an apparent contraction, because of this apparent contraction of infinite consciousness into a finite mind, the happiness, the wholeness, the completeness, the perfection of infinite consciousness is also contracted. That is why each of our finite minds experiences contracted happiness, or just a, a small amount of happiness. and uh, it, it, Our minds don't experience the fullness of happiness. In other words, our minds experience suffering because of this contraction of consciousness. With the contraction of consciousness comes a contraction of its innate happiness. 
And therefore, each fi in, within each finite mind, there is this desire, this implicit desire in each of our minds to find the happiness that is at its source, the, the source of infinite consciousness. And that is why all separate selves seek happiness above all else. So uh, suffering, the absence of happiness or the sense of lack, is an inevitable counterpart to manifestation. It is the price consciousness pays for manifestation. But it, it, you've just... I Thank you for sharing that, but we still... <clears throat> the purpose, you know, what, what for? The purpose I mean, I of, a, of a finite mind, once our finite minds have... Once infinite consciousness has assumed the form of each of our finite minds, the purpose, the ultimate purpose of each of our finite minds is to return to its natural condition of infinite consciousness. Uh, imagine that infinite consciousness is like a, a, a rubber ball. Some of you are familiar with this analogy that I sometimes use. So infinite consciousness is a, like a rubber ball that is in a state of equilibrium. The rubber ball is neither tending to expand or explode, nor is it tending to contract. It is just in a state of equilibrium. It is at peace. Now imagine that rubber ball were to be contracted. Now, that's like the contraction of each of our minds are like a contraction of infinite consciousness. Now the contracted rubber ball is no longer in a state of equilibrium. It is in a state of tension. The rubber ball is always trying to revert to its original natural condition of equilibrium or peace. Now, each of our minds are like a contracted rubber ball of consciousness, like a limited, temporary, finite ball of consciousness that has been sh shrunk into a body. And as a result, there is this tendency in everybody, in all finite minds, by definition, are seeking to return to their natural state of, state of equilibrium. Now, this, this natural tendency to return to the state of equilibrium is felt by the finite mind as the desire for happiness. And it is the prime motivating force in all finite minds. So what is the purpose of the finite mind? It is to return to its natural state of equilibrium. And that is why if you ask any finite mind, what do you want above all else? Each mind, if it is honest, will answer happiness. Yeah, but still... <laughs> There's, there's still this, you know, we go to India, all over Asia, so many places. Sorry? There's so much suffering. I mean, there's, there's, there's outside yeah, of... Yeah, there's the suffering. I mean, there's, we've, we've already you know, explored you know, why there is... My whole life so has been about me and me and myself, and, you know, and me going back to myself and, you know, being all whole and, you know, a bouncy big ball, you know, jumping around. But that's just, that's great. And it would be great to be there. And and then and then I say and then for what purpose, you know? If what, you are what, is a there, suffering is there, self, is there, your what, purpose, for what purpose was I on the planet? You if know, you are a suffering self, you have one purpose in life, and it is to find happiness. And when I stop suffering, well, then you will have achieved your purpose, and you'll no longer have a purpose, or your purpose then, will then be simply to celebrate and express the happiness that you have found. Or just pop it. Sorry? I just, just, or, or die and return. Very few people that are happy have the desire to die. Ah. Most people that are happy want to have a long life expressing and sharing and celebrating their happiness. And how about all the I've other people? I've never met a happy person that wanted to die. Yeah, but then, I mean, the other part of it is there's a whole bunch of people out there who are not very happy, are they? No, I mean, there, there seems to be very little... There are lots uh, of people that are suffering out there because there are lots of people that, that don't know who they essentially are. And in fact, if you look at the activities of all those suffering people, 
all they are actually trying to do is find happiness through their various activities. Most of them have not yet realized that the activities and the objects in which they are seeking happiness will never bring them the happiness they seek. Very few have, have, have yet realized that the happiness they seek can only be found in the knowing of their own being as it is. So going back to there is nothing to do... And they just... but, but please don't keep quoting there is nothing to do to me. I have not said at any time during the last 24 hours there is nothing to do. There is something to do. What is there to do? Investigate the one who is unhappy. If you think that happiness can be brought about by doing nothing, then by all means doing it, continue doing nothing, but you will remain miserable. Hmm. Sooner or later, your misery will compel you to start seeking happiness again. So all these people who are unhappy and subscribe to the belief that there is nothing to do are simply fooling themselves. Sooner or later, their misery will compel them to start seeking again. It is not possible to be miserable and not to be seeking happiness. Misery is the search for happiness. So if you are unhappy, don't fool yourself that you are doing nothing or that there is nothing to do. If you are unhappy, there is something to do. What most people are doing to alleviate their unhappiness is to seek objects, substances, activities, special states of mind and relationships. We are all here this week because that search for happiness in objective experience has failed us. Once the search for happiness in objective experience has failed us, there is only one possibility left, and that is to seek happiness in the one place that we have yet to seek it, that is in subjective experience, or the subject of experience, what I essentially am. All the great religious and spiritual teachings say in one way or another, the place of peace and happiness is in yourself. Here, we just go there directly. We no longer need, in, in our age, we no longer need to go round the houses. We just go there directly. <laughs>